Do you have any idea what your music looks like? Have you ever seen it visualized? Well, that's what we're doing today. We're going to look at some of my music on the computer screen in an audio program. And we'll dissect it and get a close look at what sound looks like right here on It's Cup of Time. Today, we're visualizing sound. And as I've written in my blog, and I've put in other previous videos, I like to record every session, every concert, every performance that I present. And it's not that I'm going to release all this music into the world. It's you know, for my own personal use. It, what I like to do is I like to go through everything and find out what it sounds like, what went right, what maybe went wrong, so that I can correct it. And I especially like to put it up on my Mac in an audio program where I can see the actual waveforms. And then I go through it and I dissect, you know, what's going on. And I've done this so much that I can recognize a lot of things just by looking at them. You could even turn the sound off and I could tell you what gong or bell, I could tell you what's happening, because I, I've become very familiar with how my music looks visually. Now I have my own recording studio, so I do a lot of production there, and with that I'm also looking at waveforms all the time, the various instruments, the various tracks. Now you don't have to get that deep and involved in everything, but I really think it's important to just know what your music looks like. As I've said in previous videos, there's no excuse to not own a digital recorder. You can get some really good ones for $100 or a little over 100 sometimes on sale for about $80. So there's no excuse for not having a digital recorder that you could record your practice sessions, your performances with, and then listen back, again, to know what was going on. Because when I'm playing, music is moving in real time. I'm standing here, when the music keeps going, and I'm following it. I'm not like, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to focus my attention on this thing I just did because I'm still playing. Or yeah, I don't want to just stop and go, okay, wait a minute, folks. I just did something really interesting and I want to you know, try to do it again. I want to think about it. That doesn't work. Music is a living, breathing thing that moves in real time. And I have to keep up with it. So by the time I get to the end of a session, something 40 minutes ago, you know, it's, it's certainly not fresh in my mind. So I like to have these audio recordings to listen to. But as I said, I like to also dissect them visually and see what's going on. It's kind of a nerdy thing, but that's me. You might not want to get that involved, but it's kind of fun, even if you just do it a few times. There are a lot of free programs out there like Audacity. And if you have any sort of Mac product, you have GarageBand. There are a lot of other basic programs of audio things out there that you can get, and they're free. The basic beginner versions are usually free. And these are great because you can load up your digital audio and take a look. What does it look like? So today, I'm going to be using uh, one of my favorite programs. It's a Mac-only program called Fission from Rogue Amoeba Audio. I like it because if I put a stereo program in it, it combines the two channels into one mirrored waveform, 
Whereas in some others like Audacity or GarageBand or Logic, any, any of these other ones, you will you should get two waveforms left and right. But I like to have them both together. It's just a little easier to compare what's going on. So we'll take a look at that. We're going to explore my most recent performance, which I haven't even listened to the recording of yet. And we'll look for things and look at you know, how my performance moves along, how I'm playing the different instruments and trying to present different ideas, different things. And sometimes you hear them, you know, audio only, and you're not sure what's going on. But visually and audio together, and with my explanation, you can go, oh, that's what's happening there. So, welcome to Visual Sound on its cup of time. Here's an actual camera shot of my computer screen. I'm not doing a screenshot because I want to be able to point things out. So I have a pencil for a pointer and I'll be able to point different things out. As I said, here is the audio of my last gong session. It's in a program called Fission from Rogue Amoeba. And this is what audio looks like. This is an hour long, a little over an hour. And you can see there's a definite shape to everything. And that's how I, I like to work. Instead of just having big noise gongs for an hour, which really doesn't interest me, and I don't think people can find that relaxing, I like to change things up. So I like to have a quiet beginning here, build things up. Here's a climax here, big gong climax, bring things down, build them up again, bring things up and down, up and down, have a big final climax, bring them up and down, up and down and down. And throughout all this are various instruments. I'm always changing things up. I usually start with the bowls and from there move to the gongs and then in Within here, I will be playing, moving between different gongs and then back and forth to bowls and bells, Burma bells, my kalimba, a wave drum, a lot of different things. So I really like to mix it up. But this is what it looks like for the whole session. We are going to zoom in here. here let's get back. We want to get into the very beginning. We're going to zoom here. Here's the beginning. Now these are some singing bowl strikes. And what's real important to notice, you can really tell right here, you can see these little bumps. Those are the actual waves of the sound modulating. So when you hit a bowl, it doesn't just go bah, and stay straight. There's always some vibrato in there usually. So when I'm hitting here, it's going to go bah, wah, 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 wah. So you can see all of these have that happening. So we'll listen to a little of this. And it's not going to be high quality audio because I'm just using my lavalier mic here coming out of my sound system. We're in my office, not my studio. so. For these purposes, it will work fine. So let's start this. Now you might be able to hear the noise floor there. I've got it turned up really loud for this quiet part, so you're hearing the, the AC and whatever was running that day. You can see it's slow paced, 
These are fairly evenly spaced. And these are things that you might not always notice when you listen back to something, but seeing it on a screen like this, you can notice how fairly even those are spaced out. I like to start slowly instead of just jumping to big gongs. You know, I don't want to scare anybody right away. But I want to get them relaxed, get them focused, get everybody in the same space. But you can hear that wah, wah, wah there. So I used to rush more into things, but over time I've learned to trust the pacing and to slow things down and to extend my sounds. And you can hear that wah, 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 wah. And we can see it here. And watch when we get to this bowl and listen for the wah sound. So these are the type of things we can see very distinctly. And for me, it's the type of information I like to know. I'm very visual. So I like to see what's happening. Let's move this down a little. Put a slow pace here. can see all of that wah sound in the different bowls. All right, let's move a little further ahead here. Let me kind of scroll in and start to get some gong hits here. I could tell that was a gong by looking at it. Because I recognized the shape and I recognized the gongs. That was my 32 inch Peisty Symphonic Gong. I recognized the shape of its wave. Let's stop it here because I want to talk about what's coming up. Let's move this over. Okay, this is important. And again, you can listen, but you don't get the same information. This is just a different way of sort of hearing with your eyes and seeing what is going on. If we look here, this is, I believe this is a bowl strike here, but these are gongs. This is the same gong in succession and you can see the spacing between hits is pretty much the same and we can also see the hits the sound increases in volume 
So it's this type of information. Again, that's important to me. I, I'm, I'm nerdy. I like to dissect what's going on. I like to make sure that what I'm doing is what I intend to do. So this is something I intended to do. I wanted to play this gong and keep the timing the same, bring it up in sound and volume here, the intensity. Then we get a couple other gongs here, big hit. Now we get some more of everything together, blended together. But this is a real important thing here to notice how that is symmetrical. Let me see, we'll get that even open more here, a little bigger. All right, now let's listen to that. Okay, I'm going to stop it here one more time. Some large is just a little, whoops, just a little more here. And again, just like with the bowls, you can see all these little peaks and valleys here. And you could hear the gong going, wah, 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 like that. So here's one two, three, four, five strikes on the same gong, which is my portal gong. It's a 22 inch heavy wind gong from Sentent cymbals and gongs. And you can see it builds up. The timing is even. Then we bring in another gong here and move on from there. Things I like to look at, things I like to understand about what is happening in my music. So let's uh, look on a little further. So we've got a big crescendo coming up here. I'm going kind to of start it here. Let me turn it down a little because that's going to get louder. So this is my 32 inch Paiste Symphonic. And you can see there's, there's a buildup of intensity that's, you know, it's pretty straight. I've got peaks and valleys, but the buildup is, if you put it on a graph, it's, it's straight. So there's a method, you know, to everything I do, as I explained in some previous videos. As much as things are improvised, they're not necessarily left to chance. I draw on all my years of experience in order to make things, you know, work out in, I guess you could say, a controlled manner, not haphazard. Well, actually, this isn't my symphonic gong. I think this is a Jupiter gong here. Cut. 
cut, cut. All right, let's look here at this buildup on a large gong. And we can see we've got peaks and valleys here, but it's fairly linear in its progression from quiet to loud. And that's intended. This is not anything haphazard. So that's part of why I like to you know, look at things I've done to make sure that they turn out the way I expected them to be. And I'm always learning. And especially if something happens, I like to be able to see it. I want to see what's going on. And I want to hear it. And then if it's something good, I can figure out what I did and add it to my toolbox. And if it's something that didn't quite turn out, I can figure out again what it was and how it happened and take it out of my toolbox. But Again, here you can see fairly linear on the buildup. Let's listen to that. and down to give it a little variation instead of just loud 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 I like to you know, create these sort of fluctuations in the sound to me it lets the sound breathe it also lets the listener breathe with the sound second gong here just to give it a little reinforcement and sort of spread the frequencies out sort of the release building up tension here and then a release sort of a quick dramatic release and now bringing it down sort of a long release time here using multiple gongs to bring in different frequencies Again, we can sort of see there's this gradual decrescendo here, coming down, coming down, coming down. And it's fairly linear. Again, going up and down, up and down, changing the intensity. Now bringing in the Sheng bell plates.
sort of giving a finality to that section. But tension and release, for me that's a big thing. Create the tension, build it up, then release it. But release it slowly. Don't just drop it and leave people hanging. Bring them back down, gently, gradually. Okay, so now we're going to go into what I would consider another section. Because everything changes, but let's move this over. We can kind of see this is a whole section here. Starting over here. So I look at what I do in, in musical terms. I mean, this is a composition, even though it's mostly improvised at the time. It's still a composition to me. And I have different sections, different movements, whatever you want to call it. So this is one such thing on the large gongs. Now we're going to go into a different type of section. And you can see it looks very different here. We've got some smaller hits, fairly consistent. Then we get into a lot of different sort of sound there. So here we are, the Sheng bell plates. And notice how the pace is totally changed. It's very relaxed, it's very open, where before with the gongs it was all sound here. It's a strike, then it comes down, it releases, and the next strike. So I look at pacing, I look at transitions between sections, And always moving things forward, but not in a haphazard or random way. So you could look at this section here with, with the Shang. It's almost like a transition from the gongs into here. Now here's some seed rattles. Again, a, another change of pace and a change of texture. Looking at the natural the seed, the nut shells. Very different than the metal sounds preceding it. All right, let's move ahead some. Find a different section here. See what's going on. Here's the kalimba, another change of pace. And I like to use the kalimba because it's, it's a very soft, melodic sound. And it's very thin sounding compared to the bigger, heavier gongs. There's a lightness to it. So we just came out of that heavy section of loud gongs, brought it down, and now we've got this very quiet, peaceful section. Let's look ahead further. This is all interesting for me because I can't remember what I did. <laughs> Not exactly. So now we've got gongs coming in. We can see these bigger gong hits. We'll pick it up from here. I'm playing the wave drum, ocean drum, in one hand, and striking different gongs with the other hand. 
Now, if you really want a challenge, it's a challenge enough to play an ocean drum, but play it in one hand and strike the gongs with your other hand without losing the flow of the ocean drum. So we can see we've got all these spaced out gong hits, single hits. The timing's fairly consistent. I'm listening to the gong as it fades and paying attention to the fade. And when I think it's faded enough, I'll bring in the next strike on the gong. Sometimes like here and here, I let it linger a little more. This whole section, the idea here is to just slow time down. Get out of that hurried pace. Slow everything down. And those of you who are familiar with what I do, especially everyone who was at the Gong Summit for my master class, time is of great interest to me, especially how we can both perceive time and manipulate our perception of time. Time is flexible. It is not static. So here, I'm just trying to slow the pace of everything way down. A lot of breathing room between each gong strike. Because again, we just came out of that really fast gong section. Fast in loud, building up, very intense. So this is a part of that release, a long release. Letting people come back down. And purposely, I am working to slow their perception of time of the time they are currently in to slow that perception down. I mean, I watch a lot of gong videos on Facebook or YouTube and one thing that really strikes me is how so many people seem to be in a hurry to make and, and they also seem to want to make very loud sounds I love to play quietly I love to play slowly I love this sort of pace Hopefully you can feel this time change here through the video and how the pulse is slowed way down and there's space in between everything. And the sounds are both opening and closing type gong sounds. That's a very closing sound. That's the center of my Sound Creation Water Gong number four.
feel the breathing here. <sighs> Taking a breath. Now we're moving into keeping the same idea, but this is a handheld gong. This is a 19 inch gong plate from Grotta Sonora in Italy. And I like it because it gives a little more of a bell type sound. I use a very hard mallet here. The previous gongs were played with a big soft padded mallet. This is played with a hard yarn mallet. keeping that same slow pace that slow breathing the gongs are breathing you can feel those long breaths and if you can imagine lying on a yoga mat listening to this my intention would be that your mind, your body, your spirit would all slow down. You know, we're so hurried today in our pace of life. My intention here is to just slow everyone down. Now depending on the place, I might be walking around among the people. Playing the gong. So everybody gets sort of up close and personal. So now I bring in two more gongs. My water gong and a 22 inch Peisty accent gong, which have a very close frequency. So they get some nice beat patterns. You probably hopefully hear that wah, 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 wah there. So still continuing with that very consistent pacing here, slowing things down, listening to the vibrations of the gongs, listening to the, how they fade out, listening to the room, and also feeling the atmosphere, feeling the people in the room. something you should, if you don't do it already, is try this when you're practicing. Try to play at a very slow pace, at a very quiet volume, yet sustain the energy. Don't let the energy dissipate. And that's what doing it with intent does. My intent is to keep the energy there, but to bring the volume and the timing down. So here we go. We're starting another build up. You can see we've come out of that section, out of that slow section. And now we're going to lead into the sort of the grand finale climax that's coming up. You can see that starting here. But from single hits now to a sustained gong sound, giving a very different character. And this is this little part here, we could see as a transition. 
moving into the friction mallets, the flumey. Still keeping that slow pace. Hopefully everybody is pretty zoned out by now. And the flumey sounds just really hit them and take them to another realm, another place. And oftentimes those are the comments I get afterwards. But the slowing of everything, I think it makes people much more receptive. And I'm keeping that slow pace. Instead of just jumping in and playing all kinds of quick little things, it's just keeping that nice slow pace, that breathing pace. And you can feel it. These sounds are breathing. And that's an important lesson that I had to learn, was to let the sounds breathe. I think part of it was, once I got started, I had some adrenaline flow, which made me want to just keep things going and, and keep a faster pace and not to pause and not to breathe. But I had to consciously tell myself to breathe at a slower pace, use my own breath to become the breath of the gongs. And looking at my audio like this in a video, you know, in a visual form, that made a lot of difference because, again, for me, I could see what was happening there. And it helped me to develop my technique and my ideas further and improve what I do, evolve what I do. I was looking at a video, or I was looking at a session from like three or four years ago, and it's so totally different than how I play now. There's very different instruments, for one, because I'm always changing things out, evolving my setup, but just the way I played and paced everything is completely different. All right, so here we go, sort of the grand finale, building up to a big crescendo, ramping it up, Kind of a drop off, then a big sustained crescendo, then bringing it down again. And I remember one time after a session, when I was talking to everybody, somebody asked me a question. They said, are you counting? And I thought that was very astute of them to pick that up. And I said, yes, I'm always counting. And I am, and that comes from my drummer training. I'm always counting. And it helps me keep a pace of what I'm doing. So th throughout this section here, I am actually counting. I'm counting along the lines of one, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm counting to help keep a pace and to help keep me from rushing ahead. From just, again, here's all that energy, all that excitement. My adrenaline is pumping. It would be easy to let things get away. I don't want that. I will stop here. 
I don't want that. I want to keep this pace. I'm coming out of the slow section. I still want to keep that sort of pace, but now I'm playing more sound as opposed to single hits. So I want this to build up, but I still want it to be at a gradual pace. I don't want it to be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and everything is just like slamming. And to me, I am intentionally trying to pass that information on to the people listening. And that person picked up on my counting. But I do change the pace throughout my performance here. I'm not keeping the same tempo. I do change the tempo of my pace there. But here, it's slow. I want to keep it fairly slow. And like I said, it's easy to get excited here and lose it. Okay, let's just kind of move ahead from the crescendo. So we're coming out of this crescendo here into a different section. And these are my copper clad bells. And here I'm definitely counting and feeling. Now out of, I have six bells up there, the number two bell has a particular pulse, like we've been looking at the pulses of the bowls, and I use that for the timing pulse for this part here. So that gives me the count but I'm still stretching things out. So I'm playing the bells in my left hand with a marimba mallet, and I have the big padded mallet, and I'm playing the 32-inch symphonic around just off-center and just playing a quieter drone in the background. So multitasking here. So again, that slow pace. I mean, I, I think people come to a gong session to relax. So I don't want to rush them. I don't want to get them agitated or worked up. I want them to relax. They get worked up enough during their life, during their work, their school, family time. It's hectic enough out there. I really want this hour or so to just be a time out from the world. Time where they can breathe, they can slow down. So here, I'm going to stop it right here, and you can see in these two sections, which are the same, you can see how evenly spaced these are. There's three a little longer, three a little longer, three a little longer, three a little longer. That's because I am counting as I play. I'm feeling this pulse. These are intentional. I'm not just banging on the bells randomly. This is intentional. I'm working to create a certain space, a certain mood, a certain timing. Again, trying to keep this timing very open. So you can count along and pick up, it's four, four, and six, I think it is.
Actually, it's doubled that. It's eight, eight. And the longer one might be 12. It's like when I do it, it's, it's unconscious because I've done it so many times. I just know. So I'm keeping that same timing. Just playing at a faster pace, but it's the same one, two, three, four underneath. section coming back. So, in my sessions, it's probably somewhere about 50-50 improvised versus composed parts. And these parts like this are composed. They do change, they're flexible. I, the thing, especially when you're playing solo, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about somebody else following you. So these can change and flex. Sometimes I'll play parts longer. I might do this three times instead of two times. Things like that. So, like I said, it's, it's about half and half. Improvised versus composed parts. And people have asked me about that. And, you know, why do I have composed parts? And that's just been developed over the years of doing you know, hundreds and hundreds of sessions and dealing with people and their reactions to what I'm doing and trying to find things that, for me, produce a certain effect. So this whole idea of slowing things down, that is a purposeful thing I do with intent to pass on to the people who are there, that they will slow down. So things are written or composed, however you want to look at it, with that in mind. Okay, now we're getting close to the end here. We still have about what, 10 minutes or so of this going, but here we're bringing the pace down. Let me click up here. Bringing in some bells. This is a drobu bell played with a mallet. And some singing bowls, rin bowls. Still, the pace is slow. Let's move up to here. So here's a drobu played with a mallet. I've taken the clapper out so I can hold it upside down. And again, notice the timing here. So very consistent strokes because I'm paying attention. I can count the time, but I can also feel the time. From being a drummer in bands for 
you know, 30, 40 years playing in bands, I've developed what I think is a really good sense of time. I can feel the time. I don't have to necessarily count it to know what's going on. I can feel it. I know when a certain amount of time has passed. Like here, I can tell. So I'm not really counting these. I'm just feeling them. And there's a bowl, a small bowl, but let's move up ahead here. We're towards the end. We can see what's happening. Here's the end part. Still keeping that same sort of slow pace. We've got bowls here. Oh, I can't remember what I did here. Oh, these are the uh, Martin Blazy Trigons. I've got the whole box of the higher pitched ones and I bring four of them with me. The Venus, the Jupiter, the Sun, and one of the Earth ones. I think it's the Earth Day. And we've had a lot of heavy, big metal sounds in that so far. So here we are at the end. And I like these because they lighten things up. They're very light, they're very high pitched, very bright. Brings in a completely different texture. I like that lightness, that difference. They're the smallest instruments I have with me. So they're the smallest, lightest, highest pitch sounds, really. And if you've been following here with your breathing, that it's that same pace. You should be breathing slowly now. This is the portal gong again. At least that's what I call it because I use it to, in my mind, open a portal in time and space. And here it's a time portal. Sort of reopening time to go back into normal time. Final gong swell and a number nine Peisty bronze gong. Let everything fade out. People might be expecting another sound, but no, just let it, let it be. Let the room open up, let the air open up. And I will hold this for quite some time now. On this example, I faded it out, but in real life, I will just I will just continue that, and I will leave it go and go and go. Let people just kind of breathe in the silence. I think that's something people also don't understand that silence is as needed as sound. And after all of this sound, the silence becomes extremely loud, extremely large, because we haven't experienced it. And now, silence. So everybody is enveloped, wrapped up in this silence for a minute or two. I used to just kind of finish and then, okay, we're done, sort of thing. But and that was too disturbing. And over time, I learned, you know, let, let it go. Trust in it. 
let things just be with the silence. Let the people enjoy this silence. Hopefully they are deeply zoned out right now. Hopefully they are maybe in a delta or theta state or something. They are really relaxed and open. And just let them breathe a while. So I usually do that for a few minutes and then I will play some small sounds and give some instructions as far as, you know, stretching your limbs, getting your muscles moving, waking up, taking your time to do that. Okay, so visual sound. I hope you've enjoyed this sort of guided tour of my last session. Looking at waveforms, looking at what you can learn by actually seeing your music. And for me, it's a big learning tool. Even just, I haven't listened to this, I haven't seen this one yet. Today, it, it was very illuminating to me to go through it and to really concentrate on what was happening there. So thanks for coming along for the journey. We might do another thing looking at um, single gong hits and bowl hits, single samples, and looking at how those are of a wide variety of gongs and instruments. So thanks, and we will see you on the next It's Cup of Time.